Hello, everyone, and welcome to week 16 of USMLE Domination High Yield Tutorials. This is the second of the arthritis series, so I'm excited about this uh, talk. Let's start with the high yield question. So this is a 29-year-old female with rheumatoid arthritis presenting with pain and swelling around her right hip joint that started six hours prior. She has a low-grade fever, but is otherwise healthy. Her imaging is shown below. You have a CT image through the pelvis showing the right and the left hip. What's the next best step in management? Is it to get an arthrocentesis, give steroids, start methotrexate, or give broad spectrum antibiotics? What's the next best step in management? I promise we'll come back to this IEO question at the very end. So let's talk about inflammatory arthritis. Last week, we talked about degenerative arthritis, and now we're going to talk about inflammatory arthritis. And of course, the hallmark inflammatory arthritis is rheumatoid arthritis, which we're going to spend a lot of time talking about. Septic arthritis is an infectious arthritis, but it is inflammatory in nature because we have erosions, which we'll talk about in a second. And of course, the seronegative spondyloarthropathies, which is like psoriasis, reactive or chronic reactive arthritis, uh, ang spawn, inflammatory bowel disease arthritis. We've, it is an inflammatory arthritis, but we've already talked about this in week 10. So if you want a refresher for that, please see US Assembly video uh, week number 10. So this is key for the US Assembly. So for all inflammatory arthritis, we're losing bone in the form of erosions, right? We're getting loss of bone because there's an erosion that's occurring from the inflammatory process. That's in distinction to degenerative arthritis like osteoarthritis, where bone is formed in the form of osteophytes, right? You get proliferation or production of new bone or more bone in the form of osteophytes. In all the cases that I'm going to show you today, we're going to have loss of bone in the form of erosions. Erosions is the hallmark finding of inflammatory arthritis. Now, rheumatoid arthritis, which is the hallmark arthritis of inflammatory arthritis, it's an autoimmune inflammatory disease, right? So it's, it's autoimmune. The exact cause isn't necessarily known, but it's thought to be autoimmune in nature. It's a chronic systemic disease. So this occurs and it, patients live with this with, for the duration of a large part of their life. It's a systemic disease. So other parts of the body can be involved. People can have, there can be lung issues. There can be cardiac issues. Uh, people can have anemia, you know, fever, fatigue, you know, all these systemic uh, constitutional symptoms. We don't know the exact cause, but, you know, certain viruses have been implicated. You know, tobacco has also been implicated as a, as a potential cause. So these are all things to remember when thinking about rheumatoid arthritis. And as is the case with most collagen vascular diseases, not all, but most, women are actually three times more affected than men in the setting of rheumatoid arthritis. And typically this happens in middle age between the ages of 30 and 50. This is the peak incidence for those who get rheumatoid arthritis. The key in terms of the presentation is that you get symmetric pain and swelling of joints. So it's typically bilateral, typically the same joints are involved in, on both sides of the body. And this concept of morning stiffness, which is so key, right? So in rheumatoid arthritis and in all inflammatory arthritis, the pain is worse in the morning and gets better throughout the day. That's in distinction to degenerative arthritis like osteoarthritis, where the pain is worse with activity and gets better with rest. Very important for reading question stems for the USMLE. There's constitutional symptoms like fever, fatigue, weight loss, which you wouldn't expect in degenerative arthritis. And often in terms of laboratory values, RF is typically positive anti-cyclic citrullinated peptide antibodies typically positive. And that's the anti-CCP antibody is more specific than RF when we're talking about rheumatoid arthritis. And when I talk about the imaging here, let's talk and focus more on the first at the normal left wrist. So if we take a look here at the radiocarpal joint between the radius and the proximal carpal row, which consists of the scaphoid, lunate, triquetrum, there's a normal joint space. We don't see any erosions. We don't see soft tissue swelling. Uh, we don't see any osteopenia around the joint or decreased mineralization. This is a normal appearance of what a normal wrist should look like. If we contrast to the wrist here on the right side in the patient with rheumatoid arthritis, notice that the joint space is narrowed and the entire joint space is narrowed. The entire radiocarpal joint space is narrowed bilaterally. It's the bilateral symmetric process. And the, it's not just part of the joint space that's narrowed. The entire joint space is narrowed. And you have all these lucencies or all these, you know, darker areas within the bone. These are erosions. So you can see that here, 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 I mean, literally everywhere along the proximal carpal row, you have these erosions, right? So again, erosions is the hallmark finding of rheumatoid arthritis and all inflammatory arthropathies. 
in rheumatoid arthritis, it's classically bilateral symmetric and a proximal distribution. So the joints of the wrist, the MCP joints in the hand, the PIP joints, the DIP joints are almost never involved. The most distal joints in the hand are almost never involved in rheumatoid arthritis. So we take a look at an elbow, let's focus here on a normal elbow. Notice that, you know, there's two joints in the elbow, the radiocapitellar between the radius and the capitellum and the trochlear ulnar joint between the proximal ulna and the trochlea. They're more or less normal, right? There's no joint space narrowing. There's no erosions. Uh, there's no joint effusion here, no soft tissue swelling. If we contrast here to this elbow with rheumatoid arthritis, we have this, you know, triangular dark lucency here. This is, represents a joint effusion. We're seeing a posterior fat pad, you know, outlined here on this x-ray that indicates a joint effusion and there's some soft tissue swelling. And if you take a look here, look at the radio capitellar joint. It's like the subarticular bone is like undulating appearance. It's eroded. There's loss of bone. It's not as clean as here. We can see the radial head very well here. We don't see the radial head very well here. It looks very ill-defined, irregular. So does a trochlear ulnar joint. These are all erosions. These are all, this is loss of bone, right? So this is another classic hallmark finding in rheumatoid arthritis. We typically treat this with NSAIDs, DMARDs, or disease-modifying anti-rheumatic drugs like methotrexate or anti-tumor necrosis factor agents. Uh, this is classically the treatment for how we try to decrease flares in patients with rheumatoid arthritis. So as a bonus question, you know, let's say there's a 31-year-old female with rheumatoid arthritis that's gotten no relief from NSAIDs for her joint pain. Before prescribing methotrexate, what lab test should you order? Should you get a basic metabolic profile, an ESR, liver enzymes, or a TB screen? And of course, we know the answer here is liver enzymes, super high yield for the USMLE because methotrexate can lead to hepatic fibrosis, okay, and cirrhosis, quite frankly, right? So you want to make sure that you check liver enzymes to avoid that complication. Now, if you were prescribing anti-TNF drugs, you would do a TB screen, right, for that drug because that can exacerbate or anti-TNF drugs can exacerbate and disseminate and cause disseminated tuberculosis. So you would want to uh, do a TB screen for that type of drug. Let's talk about septic arthritis, which is infection within a joint, right? Very important topic for the USMLE. You likely will see something about septic arthritis in the USMLE. Well, we can, the most important risk factors are things like IV drug use, patients that are immunocompromised, patients that are on steroids, even rheumatoid arthritis is a risk factor for septic arthritis because you have chronic inflammation, destruction of the joint that can lead to even more destruction and inflammation. So that's an important point to keep in mind that often is overlooked when talking about septic arthritis. It's usually monoarticular. Only one joint in the body is typically involved in septic arthritis in contrast to, you know, most other arthritis is where multiple joints are involved. The usual culprits are like staph aureus, streptococcus pneumonia, Neisseria gonorrhea. These are the usual pathologic agents that result in septic arthritis. And this is a CT, the chronal CT that I showed earlier, showing a normal left hip joint. The joint space is maintained, nice subchondral bone, no erosions, no osteophytes, nothing. But here there's symmetric joint space loss. The entire joint space is narrowed. There's all these lucencies and look at how irregular the femoral head is here and the acetabulum is here. These are all erosions, right? So this is a nice example of what erosions would look like and joint space loss in the case of septic arthritis. It's monoarticular, right? Both sides, of the, both sides of the body aren't involved. In pretty much every other joint here, the left hip joint looks good. The, you know, the lower lumbar spine looks great. It's just the right hip that's involved. Monoarticular process, classic case for septic arthritis. So the must know points for the USMLE for rheumatoid arthritis, it's, it represents chronic inflammation in the joint. Morning stiffness is the hallmark presentation, right? You're gonna have pain worse in the morning, getting better throughout the day. Bilateral symmetric swollen joints, particularly proximal distribution, wrist, MCP and PIP joints in the hand. It's gonna be bilateral symmetric as opposed to asymmetric that we see in degenerative arthritis is like osteoarthritis. You're gonna have soft tissue swelling um, and erosions or loss of bone, right? You're not gonna produce more bone in the form of osteophytes. You're gonna lose bone in the form of erosions. We treat this with NSAIDs, DMARDs, anti-TNF agents. Remember that for the USMLE, the classic pearls are the anti-CCP peptide antibody is more specific than RF. You always wanna check liver enzymes when starting methotrexate because it can lead to hepatic fibrosis. And you always wanna do a TB screen before starting any TNF agent. Septic arthritis is infection within the joint. 
usually is monoarticular, involves one joint, the one joint becomes red, swollen, tender. The findings are pretty similar to all inflammatory arthropathy, erosion, soft tissue swelling. You may have gas around the joint that can be a clue to septic arthritis. The bottom line is you wanna treat the underlying causative organism. And the first step is always gonna be an arthrocentesis. You always wanna tap the joint as a first step on the USMLE. Let's come back to this question. So a 29 year old female with rheumatoid arthritis presents with pain and swelling around her right hip that started six hours prior. She has a low grade fever, but is otherwise healthy. Her imaging is shown below. What's the next best step in management? So first of all, this is a young person, 29 year old with rheumatoid arthritis. You may think this is a rheumatoid arthritis question, but remember that RA is a risk factor for septic arthritis. That's an important point, right? So the, the pain is acute, not chronic, right? It started six hours ago, okay? And she has a low grade fever. And if you take a look here, the left hip is totally normal, but the right hip is completely eroded with joint space loss. Very nice example of septic arthritis. Of course, the first step in all cases of septic arthritis is to tap the joint or do an arthrocentesis. So that's always gonna be the answer on the USMLE to do an arthrocentesis. Hope that was helpful. Please tune in next week for another super high yield USMLE tutorial. Thank you so much.